Hello, and welcome to Books in the World. I'm your host, Kathleen Murphy. Books in the World is an interview show produced by the Cape Cod Writers' Center and the Cape Media Center. The Writers' Center was established 60 years ago and sponsors a four-day writers' conference right here on Cape Cod. The goal of Books in the World is to show how writers, illustrators, publishers, editors, and others in the literary field play their roles in the world of books and other communication media. This show has been broadcast continuously since 1978, making it the longest running program of its kind in the United States. Today we are delighted to welcome Peggy Jablonski, author of the book Cape Cod Camino Way, Walking with a Purpose. Welcome, Peggy. Thank you, Kathleen. It's wonderful to be here today. Glad to have you here. Thank you. Peggy has over four decades of experience as a leader in higher education, and she understands firsthand the power of coaching. As a senior administrator at universities such as Brown, MIT, and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, Peggy has guided diverse and complex organizations to meet the ever-changing needs of students, parents, and faculty. She's developed policy, strategic plans, and organizational assessments. She's managed complex building projects and handled every kind of emergency. Then, she knew it was time for a change in her life. Preparing for her next chapter, Peggy took an adult gap year immersing herself in cross-cultural experiences to learn more about the changing nature of leadership in the 21st century. During that year, she worked with a coach to integrate her experiences and then earned her own coaching certifications from the Gestalt Institute, uh, excuse me, International Study Center and the Gallup Organization. Experience taught her about the mind-body connection in leadership, so she became a certified yoga instructor and studied mindfulness meditation and other wellness practices. Coaching has since transformed her life and career, which brings us to her most recent project and book, The Cape Cod Camino Way, Walking with a Purpose. Peggy has created a series of informative walks that wind through the 15 towns of Cape Cod. Along the way, a walker can learn about diverse individuals and groups and have, excuse me, that have significantly influenced Cape Cod. Peggy uses her coaching skills and talent for raising awareness to help us understand current social issues from local perspective including racial justice, discrimination, and more. And I am really looking forward to talking with her about all of this. So thank you so much. Thank you. I look forward to going on a journey around Cape Cod with you. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. that sounds great. I'm looking forward to it, too. That'll be fun. What motivated you to write this book in the first place? Well, it stems from wanting to explore issues of racial and social justice going on in our country mm. back around 1920 and then the pandemic hit mm -hmm. and I usually travel outside the country mm -hmm. one or two times a year mm -hmm. and I had thought about hiking the Camino Way in Spain yeah. uh, which is an ancient pilgrimage route right. and so I tied those things together and I thought what is happening right here on Cape Cod in my own vicinity yeah. that I could explore and find more out about and then help share that with others Yeah, because I am an educator at heart. Right. Um, so I took the peninsula of the Cape <laughs> and mapped out an experience that took the summer of 2020 to right. complete. So it's kind of like there's very large issues that are going on in the world. And instead of trying to address the large issues from the, a world position, you're saying, why don't we address them from the perspective of right here in our own neighborhood, right here on Cape Cod? Right. right. I mean, if you think about it, you can get pretty easily overwhelmed yeah. with the onslaught of all the news every day and social media and just trying to have conversations yes. with your family and friends. So instead, uh, not instead of, but in, co in collaboration with yeah. doing that, 
to explore right what is in your backyard, yeah. people, places, stories, right. helps you ground yourself yes. and engage in the difficult conversations from a more um, place of being centered. Yes. And, yeah. and just having a little more knowledge about what's right, right around you. That and can help support your learning. Yeah, and it's less intimidating. Le much less intimidating. Because you're right there. It's right in front of right. you, or there's, there's a statue, or there's a monument. Or, there's or some... people that you're interacting people. with exactly. who are different than you. Exactly. Right. So tell me, how would you describe this book? How, how did you come up with the chapters and the process for, for writing this book? Right. Well, it stems back to having a summer of walking. Mm. So each week I would put together the sites we were going to go to check out mm -hmm. and I'd map out a route up to 15 miles mm -hmm. and we would walk every Wednesday 12 to 15 miles. And so I had a lot of information mm -hmm. from websites, from interviewing mm -hmm. uh, people who were the heads of different organizations or uh, the sites we were going to see. And so at the end of the summer, I realized I had this massive amount of information <laughs> about walking Cape Cod, but by extension, looking at issues of racial and social justice. Yeah. And I thought, I think I need to turn this into a book. Yeah. And so I was able to sequester myself for eight <laughs> weeks. Uh, my deal for my, with myself was you can go to Florida and spend two weeks in the uh, two months in the winter there, mm -hmm. but you have to write a chapter every week. Oh, wow. And so before I would go out on the golf course, <laughs> I had to write my chapter. So wow. I was able to do that, eight chapters, yeah. and then did the intro. And the end of the book is about my journey back. Right. So I did the same thing, l plotting out ah. sites on the way back and did a civil rights, civil war right. history tour. Right. Okay, so when, first of all, you're a golfer, so you are a big walker. And when I was reading a couple, of, especially the first couple of chapters in the book, I was like, she's walking like 14 or 15 miles a day on this mm -hmm. thing. And as I understand you, you structured it like every Thursday. Yes, so the, what we did, yeah. if we think back to the summer of COVID, you really couldn't stay places. So I, I, tr I didn't want to do things sequentially and, mm -hmm. and in case people joined me. Okay. And I was lucky to have over 43 people that summer join me for some part of these walks. Mm -hmm. One woman walked all eight weeks with me. And so what I chose to do was I'd put out the information on Monday. We're going to meet here. Yeah. It's going to be 12 miles. The halfway point will be this park right. in case someone wanted to join midway. Right. And I would tell them the two or three sites and the theme that we were going to focus on that week. Right. Health care, the environment, uh, policing, uh, women and people of color and science. Wow whatever, and, and, and the themes somewhat grew out of the roots yeah. because they matched up with, so women and people of color in science that took in Woods Hole. Oh, right, okay, yeah. And I interviewed some of the women scientists there, yeah. dove into what they're doing around diversity and inclusion, right. and had this whole experience around Rachel Carson and yeah. the statue there. Yeah. But I didn't know the statue was there before oh, wow. I went there. Oh, so, okay. I thought so that that's it was kind the, of what happens. Yeah. You would be open to adjusting along the way based mm -hmm. on what you saw ah. or who was with you wow. and interacted with you. Oh, okay. Yeah. I kind of thought that you had an idea of what you were going to do because there were some areas, some walks that you were not familiar with then. You Correct. hadn't done. I had not done at all. Right. And some places I had not been. Yeah. Um, another example of that would be we walked from the Mashpee Wampanoag Museum mm -hmm. in Mashpee all the way over to the Zion Union Heritage Museum in Hyannis. I had never been to either museum, yeah. and both of them are spectacular yeah. and tell the stories right. of people of color yep. in different ways, different perspectives. Yes. And that was just such a rich experience yeah. to do that on one yeah. 13, 14 mile walk. But if I remember, that was a rainy day. 
That was a tough day. It was a rainy day. Um, and it also was the day that I experienced personally mm. with my family being racially profiled on yeah. a walk. Yeah. So I'll just share with you yeah, briefly please, tell that, us about that. Um, my brother is married to a woman from Trinidad mm -hmm. and I have an eight, almost eight year old niece. Mm -hmm. And so we were all walking together, yeah. three or four of us in our t-shirts so we kind of looked like a group tour, um, but we stopped for a water break and we were then asked by a group of landscapers, what were we doing here? Mm -hmm. um, like at first it seems at like first you didn't I thought, think anything no, of it. No, at first I thought they thought we were lost and were trying to be helpful. Yeah. But my brother explained to me after that his family is gets that kind of pushback or confrontation, attention. attention. Mm. Um, and he said, you realize we were just racially profiled because there's people of color with us. Right. And then I went off by myself walking for a little bit to process that. Yeah. And that relates to it being a pilgrimage that right. each week I would try to weave in experiences where, so if we heard church bells ringing, yeah. we would stop integrate what we were learning, what we were experiencing. Yeah. I would do some yoga poses at the beginning and at the end. Yeah. And at the end of each walk, we also did what are our key takeaways today mm. in learning. So that whoever was there, whether it was two people or 10, right. we would all share what the experience was. And that was really powerful to hear. So some sharing of on that particular day when someone mm. that you love has been kind of singled out in, in a way that was not, probably not, or maybe not, um, in a kind way, maybe in a suspicious way. In a suspicious kind of way. In a what's going way. on here yeah. way. Yeah, it just made me more um, and the, And your niece aware. is eight years old. Right, seven or yeah. six at the time. And so it just made me more empathetic yeah. towards what they deal with when right. they travel. Right. Um, right. And that relates to another story that um, the head of the Zion Museum, John Reed, who's also the uh, mm -hmm. past president of the NAACP for Cape Cod, oh, wow. he told us when we went to visit the museum mm -hmm what it was like for him as a black man mm -hmm. driving on 6A at night. Oh. I had never thought of what that might be for no. a person of color. No. And so to hear that was jarring, yes. but it also just made me more understanding that right. people have different experiences on our roadways based on their gender, their skin color, yeah. et cetera. A first, per a first person kind of experience of kind of walking in their shoes. Exactly. And in this case, driving in their car. Exactly. Right? And so by doing this, that walk that week and meeting him, yeah. I was able to have that conversation with him right. and make a deeper connection. So you modeled this a little bit after the Santiago, um, the Camino, Camino de Santiago, mm -hmm. which is uh, in Spain and in some parts of Europe. So. What is it when people go on these long pilgrimages, what do you think that they're hoping to accomplish? I mean, obviously with this one, you did accomplish something. You got an insight on one of your fellow walkers' experiences firsthand. But what else do you think it is that people wish to accomplish when they take a pilgrimage? Why do they do them? Mm -hmm. Well, the pilgrimage, pilgrimages around the world basically started with a religious context right. for them. So right. in the case of the Camino in Spain, it's to arrive at Santiago de Compostela and be able to complete an experience that tests you mm. and then reaffirms your faith. Mm -hmm. um, right now there's preparations for the Hajj happening oh, yeah. in Saudi Arabia, et cetera. Right. So these happen all over the world right. and in different, across different religions. Mm -hmm. I've done some pilgrimage routes in Ireland mm. that actually were based on more pagan sites and rituals. 
So that's three religions that you've just mentioned there that are tied into a pilgrimage. Right. The Camino Santiago is more of a Christian base. Correct. And it sounds like this Ireland one was pagan. More pagan, And yeah. the Hajj that you mentioned earlier is a Muslim base. Correct. It's going through different sites like Mecca to experience that um, reawakening or maybe reaffirming of faith. Right. It's, a, it's both an internal experience and an external one because yeah. you're engaging with the space wherever right. you are and the people around you. Right. But you're also going internal. And in the case of the Camino Way for Cape Cod, right. I was trying to explore where I'm at in mm -hmm. terms of about a 60 year old white woman and what does that mean in this society yeah. at a time when you know many black people were being killed in our police situations and I have many police in my family I've worked with college police I right. am very much supportive of the work that they do right. and I wanted to understand why is this still happening right. and exploding and happening more right and so I had to go both internal yeah. and external. Um, and yeah. that's what pilgrimage is all about. Right. And then it's also about what do you do when you get back home mm -hmm. or when the experience is done? Right. How do you integrate it and have your worldview mm -hmm. be changed? Be broadened. Be broadened. During be a more, pandemic. Right. Be more open <laughs> and aware. I just keep saying it's all about awareness, yeah. right? Which stems back to some of the yoga and Buddhist principles of, you know, mindfulness and awareness. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the Camino Way, the Cape Cod Camino Way, is not re religious-based. Instead no. of using it as an awakening for religion, you're trying to make it an awakening for empathy for other groups, other people, people that are not you, regardless right. of who you are. Right. People that are not you. Correct. And also, just whose stories have I not heard yet that mm. I need to hear about here on Cape Cod? Yeah. So, for example, when I ran into the Rachel Carson statue and we had just passed the Kathy Lee Bates statue in, in Falmouth, Falmouth, and I dove into the words related to America the Beautiful, it came up that maybe there's some original language here that might be problematic yeah. given today's understanding right. of how we look at issues. Right. Same thing if you look back at our founding documents, mm -hmm. the words merciless savages is in our Declaration of Independence. Wow. So I read that the week of the 4th of July while we were walking wow. and said, okay, what do we need to understand about that now right. as we're trying to um, understand this, pil this uh, Mayflower story right. and the pilgrims and their connection with the native right. culture here on Cape Cod. Right. It all tied together. It's amazing. And it was just, and it was right there. Yeah. It was like right there in front of us that we Fantastic. had to confront it. Yeah. And Hamilton was out, the play oh, Hamilton. Right. <laughs> so we were able to quote some of the songs from there. And, right. you know, I tried to do each week. Um, in an engaging way. Mm -hmm. So I would use poetry, I would use music or artwork. Something that would prompt Something, a reaction right. or a conversation. An awareness, an right. awareness about it, yeah. So that was the planning that you did. So I think when I was reading this book, I thought of it as almost um, a guide. Um, and with everything that has been going on, the pandemic, the Black Lives Matter, politics that are inflammatory, yeah. right? And right. many of these issues are still going on. But I felt like this was almost a suggestion or a guide to help people to process because mm -hmm. you're seeing things that are happening right in your own hometown and you're talking about issues that are in your hometown but also in a broader audience. Right. So I, I talk a little bit more about some of the triggers and maybe some of the things that surprised you as you were planning your walks. Mm -hmm. Because it's, you, you were started in the Falmouth area, the Upper Cape area. Uh, I yeah, started the, at the canals, walking the both canals. sides of the yeah. canals, right? Yeah. So a couple of things there. So one is at the end of each chapter, I decided, okay, I, rep I reported on what we did, but now let me help other people do a similar experience. Yes. So I give examples of places where people can 
um, go to discover, mm -hmm. again, events, stories, um, or meet people. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I wove that in each at each chapter. And I appreciate that in your own experience, you might have been walking the 13 or 14 miles, and it might have been through the rain or so on, but that the suggestions that you make at the back for people, if they want to approach it themselves, it's a shorter walk, and generally it has, it or might not have drive. sidewalks, but yeah, or yeah. you can drive it. You can it. drive exactly. and just go to these certain sites, right. you know. Right. So right. one thing when you say what surprised you, um, so I'll give two quick examples. One would be related to women. Mm -hmm. I knew this from being an undergraduate history major, American history major, that women's stories were absent from mm -hmm. most of the history books. Right. And so I was able to delve, I tried to each week find something on the walk that related to, to women. Hmm. So okay. again, the stories of women scientists over in Woods Hole right. or on 6A discovering Mercy Otis Warren. I knew of Mercy Otis Warren a little bit, but then I delved into her life and her background and was just astounded that she interacted with many of our founding fathers, both Continued Adams, correspondence exactly. with Exactly, yeah, Jefferson, yeah. Washington, everyone. Yeah. And we don't know about her in our history. Exactly, we need a movie uh, about so her. We, oh, yes. We need we a movie do. about her. That would be great. I might even know some people that could do that. There you go. <laughs> um, so that was one example I'd give. And then another is related to the walking experience itself. Mm -hmm. There were not sidewalks yeah. in many places. And so when I think about how accessible is Cape Cod or anywhere, because that happened to me at Chapel Hill when I had my leg in a cast and couldn't oh, get around. Oh, oh. Um, you know, there were miles that we walked on Route 28 without a sidewalk. Well, I don't recommend anybody f no. do that. No. Um, and it made me just more, again, compassionate to what people who have an ability issue need to do to navigate our spaces. And we just need to continue to make all of our, our public space is more accessible. I, I like your thinking process. So you go through an experience and then it kind of, I, you're, you're leading by example. So I can picture you on your walk saying, well, okay, well this happened, let's talk about that for a second. Mm -hmm. so exactly, I like that. Yeah. yeah. I like that. And then other people would notice things that I didn't notice. And so that was helpful for the overall yeah. learning experience. So everyone for felt everyone. as though they were contributing as well if they were on the walk with you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you're still doing these walks. So yes, I am. Um, so I've shortened them. Most of them are one to two miles. Mm -hmm. And then this summer, um, I'm in partnership with the JFK Museum in Hyannis. Wendy Northcross wanted to start a walking program there. Fantastic. And she had read the book and she said, this is exactly what we need to do. Yeah. And it's so we, every Wednesday morning uh, for about 90 minutes and we go various sites in downtown Hyannis, but yeah. it weaves in the Kennedy story, not just JFK, but mm -hmm. all the Kennedys, uh, many of the Kennedys who had connections to the economy, civil rights, right. Special Olympics, Peace Corps, space program, et cetera. Talk about broad horizons. Exactly. Right. And then every Saturday morning, I, I still do the Brewster Walk, hmm. which is my hometown. Mm -hmm. And that's where I became really fully immersed in our connection with the triangle trade and the institution of slavery. That could be a whole nother discussion <laughs> um, someday. But very quickly, the yeah. triangle trade has to do with the trade of slaves, sugar, and rum around the Atlantic seaboard. Pretty much, Atlantic. yeah. yeah. I, w I like to categorize it as, as goods, services, and products right. between us, Africa, the Caribbean, and back up. Yep. And um, people of color, blacks from Africa, were, were part of that right. taken right. and ended up in the Caribbean. Right. And it was our, this was the most mind-blowing thing for me to understand. It was, it was our dried codfish that helped feed the enslaved populations yeah. in the Caribbean. Yeah. And I had been to some of those plantations on vacations, you right. know, on trips. Right. And you think it's not close Didn't to you. Didn't think anything of the connection right, right here to our sea captains. Right. You know, throughout and there are amazing, Cape Cod. amazing connections. That's exactly. not to say all sea captains no. engaged in that trade at of all. Course. 
but I think if we can just understand, acknowledge. Um, I once met Archbishop Tesman Tutu at Chapel Hill and he said to us at dinner, until you are able to confront your past, you will be unable to move into your future. And that's what I think we're trying to do with these walks, but also with everyone trying to understand and integrate our history mm. um, in a different way. In a different way, yeah. so that we don't keep repeating the same mistakes. Exactly, exactly. So good, so, so good. All right, so you're continuing to do the walks. Yes. And how is it that we sign up for them? So, thank you. So, um, <laughs> please go to the website, capecodcaminoway.com. Mm -hmm. Okay and uh, you'll find the walks uh, there. And I'm gonna add in uh, Provincetown for the, in the fall. Okay, oh great. Yeah. Good. That'll be good. And um, how was the, write real quick, we just have a little bit left. Was the writing and publishing process, it sounds like you had help with it. It was, it was pretty simple or? Well, part of it was simple because I just decided to bite the bullet and, and self-publish it. Right, And okay. so, I did hire an editor. Yep. I highly recommend hiring an editor for any writers. Right. It's worth the investment. As I say, there is no good writing. There's only good rewriting. There you go. And I hired another person uh, to help me lay it all out mm -hmm. because there's lots of charts and photos and text boxes, and I wanted to make sure that that was correct. Yeah. So yeah. I focused on the actual writing yes. and the learning component mm -hmm. of it right and then help had help from others all right well it's it's come out very good it's a very good book well, it's a guide you. it really is a guide and it's contemplative and it's constructive and i really enjoyed it um your website one more time capecodcaminoway.com Thank you yes. so much. Oh my god thank you for having yeah. me today this has been wonderful. Oh good i'm so glad. Thank you. So this book is a great guide for taking walks all over Cape Cod, but not only in your own shoes, also in someone else's. Someone you may not know well, but maybe, maybe you should. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more, you'll find links to them through our website, capecodwriterscenter.org, through our Facebook page, and on YouTube. Thank you again for watching Books in the World. Thank you.